This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 254, still hard to believe, recorded on March 31st, 2016. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all your favorite tech gadgets that find them handy. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting from the Average Guy TV studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. Spring has arrived. A little rain today, Mike. It wasn't the, the most beautiful, but rain, right? They say that uh, it makes the flowers, right? April showers bring May flowers. So. I'm hoping so. I'm yeah. Hoping so. No, it's, it wasn't bad, though. It was light, just a little sprinkle. Nice. Enough nice. to clean the car off, so it was nice. Yeah, or just make it dirtier. One right. Or two. <laughs> it picks up that salt from the winter. Yeah. And just sprays it all over your car. Of course, we post the show or the uh, show notes with world class world class show notes at at theaverageguy.tv. You can also join us live on our new mobile app. Uh, get the, it's easy to subscribe on that. Get all the everything that you need. I've got big subscribe buttons for you out there. It's super easy to get this on your mobile device. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com and uh, on that page, it's just a single page, a little WordPress instance. You can just push those buttons. Either for iPhone or Android, is our Stitcher and TuneIn links are out there uh, as well on that page. If you want to subscribe, easiest way to do it, or just search for Home Gadget Geeks in any of the podcatchers, and you can subscribe to us as well. Of course, the Home Gadget Geeks is the part of the Geeks Network. Find a link to this show and many other great podcasts out at thegeeksnetwork.com. All right, we have a fun show tonight. We have uh, someone who made a gigantic sacrifice for us because. <laughs> I'm telling you, if I said, hey, you want to wake up at 2.30 in the morning and podcast Mike Weger, Mike would say, not a chance. Nilo, yeah. thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to wake up early, super early in the morning. We'll, we'll say why here in just a second, but welcome to Home Gadget Geeks. Hey, thanks a lot, uh, and, and greetings from the North Pole, uh, very northern Sweden. Yeah, very northern Sweden so much, so if you if you think about... Uh, Nord, uh, Norway and Sweden, right? Norway is kind of on the northern edge. Sweden's in between that. Uh, and Denmark's down below it, right? You go up the you go up the Baltic Sea and go keep going up the coast and up the coast and up the coast and up the coast, and you're at the almost. You say the North Pole. How far are you from the North? Pole? Uh, just kidding. Uh, but uh, like uh, the polar circle is not that far. It's just like a couple of hours drive. So uh, there's something to it. Yeah, and then Finland to the right of you. Uh, there. Finland to the is, east, yeah, my whole Is country, there a rivalry? Right. Is there like a Norway-Sweden-Finland rivalry that goes on there? Yeah, like, there, there, like there is a bit. Weather? There is a bit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I have um, the farthest I've made it up there uh, when I was uh, when I lived in Germany. Um, I made it all the way up almost to Denmark. So Hamburg sits on the very northern edge, right? It's a port that's town. Right. That's right. And so we made it up to Hamburg, and uh, that's about as close as I got uh, to you up there. So what? tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? What do you do around tech? Some of those kinds of things. Uh, I don't know if I do that much around tech except for listening to you guys. But uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, by the way, uh, for the fact that my voice is in the pit still. I, I had a cold, and, and it completely took my voice away. No, you're all good. You need to be quiet anyways because people are sleeping. Yeah, but that's not why I'm keeping my voice down. It's because I can't do better. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm a teacher. Um, I'm into languages mostly, but um, I'm also a Google Apps uh, super admin. And um, What does that mean? Has, what does a super admin mean? Uh, I kind of take care of the whole thing, uh, Google Apps being the... Uh, the Google educational offering um, in, the, uh, in the educational area, like um, Office 365 in the Microsoft world. And so you're the super admin for the school and the kids, I assume you're using Google Apps for everything for the kids in the, in the education space. You also do a podcast uh, and you're using Google Hangouts uh, for that. Tell us a little yeah. bit about your podcast and what you do. Well, yeah, I've been... Well, podcast. I don't know, Jim. You say it's a podcast. I'm it's not a sure. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least it's a live show, if you like. And and I do offer uh, audio as well as well uh, through the net. So heck yeah, why not call it a podcast? Yeah. Um, but it's like a meeting for educators. Um, we discuss pretty much everything that's connected to um, 
learning, teaching, education, um, and uh, um, it's called Be Smart in Air, and that's a really hard thing for me to do at least. <laughs> <laughs> Be Smart on Air, and actually if you go back a year ago, uh, I was on the program. I'm not sure, you say you have smart people, I'm not sure why you had me on oh, the program at that point, but, but we had fun kind of telling my story, and uh, it was a fun fun podcast to do. In prep for this one, I went back and watched a little bit of that one, and, uh, and I, as I was watching, and I, it felt like it was just six months ago, and yeah. it was almost exactly a year ago, so a year and Isn't so, that that's funny? I, I didn't even think about that. It's, it's been yeah. a year already almost. Strange. Yeah, we talked on it. Hey, what are the, some challenges? You know, um, when we think about Sweden and we think that area, and you're an educator there, and we think about technology, we just last week, Mike, I think it was last week, right? We were talking about Chromebooks and yeah. kind of kind of how the, the, the you know the, the Chrome infrastructure is really infiltrating into American schools, hmm. and mostly because of cost. When in the, in the United States, we don't fund our schools, I think, the same way that you guys do in Sweden. I think it's a little bit different. But when you think about technology challenges that are going on there, what what kind of technologies it's, – it's obvious you're using the Google Apps, but are do, do the kids have Chromebooks? How does that work? How are you using it? How do you deploy those kinds of things? What's, what's it look like in your school? Well, um, in my school, we use Google Apps, yeah, and uh, it is becoming – pretty popular, um, like the cloud services, generally speaking, are, are getting very popular in schools. And um, I'd say pretty much all schools these days have, have uh, you know, like the one-to-one -one thing implemented, meaning that, that uh, every student or teacher has, has a, a uh, device um, supplied by the school, pretty much. It's, it's been rolling over the country really, you know, like uh, really fast in, in, in the, couple of, uh, the last couple of years. Um, so uh, obviously when everyone has a device, so, uh, so you've got to have the, the uh, information technology infrastructure there as well. And um, whether it's it's uh, Office 365 or or Google Apps or or something else, I think it, it's really got to be there uh, if if you want to do a good job with the students and and your colleagues. And are they are you guys using Chromebooks exclusively in the school? Is it a mix of them? How is that? What what kind of devices are you using? We uh, in my school we are not using Chromebooks. Not that I wouldn't like to. Because I think they are super devices, especially if you're using Google Apps for education. It's pretty much like the natural choice, the way I see it. Uh, not only due to the price either. There are several other advantages to that, if you are in the Google ecosystem, especially. Um, uh, but um, I think, generally speaking, is is it's a bit of a mix. Um, Lots of uh, laptops. Um, lots, of, lots of Windows laptops or Macs? Both. Macs are, are expensive, of course. Um, in many, way, many ways, um, they, they have been a bit easier to use, I think. And, um, well, like everyone knows, Apple puts those things together from from the very beginning to the end, uh, so uh, the the quality of the of the components and everything that's in there is is pretty high, and the price is high as well. And uh, I think mostly when people or the school school districts say buy uh, Windows laptops, they buy the cheap ones, and that's that's a pity. Like we have really cheap Windows laptops, and uh, that's not fun. And and uh, I wish they would have uh, put a little bit more money into that. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter if it's Windows or, or OS 6 or whatever, uh, as long as I, or, or Chromebooks, as long as I, me and my students get the job done. Yeah. Mike, I was, um, I was out today speaking at a high school, and the resource teacher, Hal, is the high ability learning. She's a, yep. she's a resource teacher. She had a Mac, and Bellevue just recently has moved to all Macs for all the teachers. Uh, 
and, and our kids don't have laptops in school, so it's bring your own device or it's nothing from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. But Mike, her Mac, she used it so much, she had worn the key, the the black paint off the keys. <laughs> I have never seen this on a Mac before. The black keys, like some of the letters, you could see the S and the T and the E wiped. Have you ever seen that where the never the paint, I mean, just came right off the keys? I mean, okay, maybe once on the old silver computers, not not the new aluminum ones, but they're old silver computers, I would see it a little bit, but I've had this laptop since 2009, and uh, they, I can, can't wear those off. I've been using yeah, it no. Time, but... So this would have been maybe, she said, maybe four or five years old, so would that put that in the in that generation of the older ones, or is no, that still a pretty no, newer that, one? No, that's still that's still very new. I mean, yeah. you got to think mine's seven years old, and uh, no, I'm talking about the computers from like ten years ago. Yeah, um, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, I was like, Megan, how how do you? I have never seen anyone. In it was almost like you know, you ever ever gone to an old building that has an old um a, a, a stone staircase? Like we see this in Washington D.C. I see it sometimes when I was in Europe. You know, these older buildings. And people have walked on the steps so much, the steps kind of actually start taking on little dips. The keys had little <laughs> impressions on them. And I was like, either she's, and I, I said, do you have like long nails? And no. Oh, and, yeah. and nope, she had just, either she pounds on the keys or man, she has written so much stuff. On I, I didn't think that was even possible to wear the keys out. On a no, I didn't. I didn't think so either. I'd, I've never seen that. Oh man, yeah, that's crazy. crazy. I just—that's a lot of writing. It's just, it just crazy. That's a ton of typing. No she kidding. must be on that thing all the time. So but. over in Sweden, then, when you said it's all kind of a lot of one-to-one programs, is ah. that in just secondary school, primary school as well? Like, when do they start those different programs? When do they start? <clears throat> there are those that start really early, and. Uh, Often it's it's the the uh, whole um, school district doing this thing. Okay. So, um, man, I think more and more, even with very young students, yeah. And this is kind of interesting, since, uh, for example, in in uh, in Finland, which is close, and and uh, well. Everyone knows, I guess, at least within education, that Finland has been doing really, really well in in many respects. Uh, talking about the educational system, so um, the one-to-one approach is very rare still in Finnish schools. They do have computers, sure, but but they haven't, you know, like uh, jumped into this one-to-one bandwagon all the way that much at all. And it seems to work just fine anyway, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I, I always like seeing when they're starting these programs. I went to one of the only ones in my state uh, high school that did it. And I thought, you know, high school is a good time to do it because they're responsible enough most of the time to take care of a device. But really, I think it's the young kids that could almost benefit more from the technology. So it's just interesting to hear how widespread it is. Um, up there where you are, and then back here. I mean, it's just it's it hasn't taken off. I don't think, and maybe maybe a little bit more than on when I was back in high school, but uh, it's still not very widespread here. And I don't, I don't know why the adoption rate is lower. Maybe I think it's the some funding. Of our charter schools and you know some of those. And I would say it is funding. I mean, think about OPS here, the Omaha Public Schools has some funding problems. Their schools are everybody migrated west and so all the OPS schools are in the poorer districts here or in the poorer parts of town and so the tax base isn't there and Nebraska's right. tried to do some things to move that money around uh, these learning centers or learning uh, communities I think is what they're called to put it together but no it just hasn't it that that piece has not come together and it's I think it's fairly expensive to administrate I mean Neil, you you're the you're the super admin and so you know it's 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 not a, just about putting equipment in kids' hands. Heavens, no. Even right? though that's being that's just the, that's scratching the surface, right? I mean, what what are some of the biggest problems from an administrator standpoint? What's your biggest problem? I mean, what do you see the most often when you think about admin problems that you have all the time? What's your biggest problem? Well, to start with, actually, from my part, um, I'm I'm not dealing with the hardware at all. Luckily, uh, I'm just I'm just running the the uh, 
cloud service we are using the, on on day to day basis with with the um, with the colleagues and students. That is for us Google Apps for Education. Uh, and I started this thing because it was really really bad. Like the workflow was just you know lousy. Things were really awful since all the school assignments were you know they were sent perhaps like email attachments or uh, through Dropbox with some teachers or bouncing between the computers directly and that was just madness it's just madness so I think for many schools a big problem is that these days yeah the, you have the gear most probably in Sweden at least uh, since the, the principals really really put lots of, of uh, effort in that is money as well into this which is of course a good thing but you need to have the the other stuff as well there and not the least you know to get the the teachers on board all the way and that is a huge thing that is a huge thing really um, so I think that's one of the the crucial things I mean the, the teachers students can be that a little they can be a little slow to adoption, right? They kind of have their way of doing things, and oh man, tell know. me about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's me as well. I'd, I'd say you know, you know? one of our other hosts, Kyle Wilcox, who comes on from time to time. Uh, he's in the Indianapolis area. He's uh, just took a job as kind of a tech support guy at, at a local school district, and he sees it all the time. You know, they can spend money on some things, but not on others. You have some teachers mm -hmm. that support it, and some that don't. It's a tough, I think a lot of times the technology that we see in, in our schools, it's as much of a human problem as it is a hardware or software problem, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you bet. Yeah, getting kids to adopt it. I, I think the students are probably the easiest part. They'll pretty much do whatever we tell them to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they kind of, uh, they're curious and they, they like this stuff uh, for sure just because it's, it's another way of doing things a little bit. I'm not saying that they are pros at using using the technology for learning right. because mostly they are not you know really <laughs> for sure uh, and and of course that's something you got to dig into really deep as well but I'd say yeah mostly getting all the teachers on board and and uh, and the principals for sure that they understand that you, you just can't dump lots, lots of equipment into a school and think it's, it's going to be fine it's not it's going to go, you know, down the drain, the whole thing. Yeah, well, and I actually think, Mike, because of you, you know, you were in a school where everybody had a laptop. Uh, and I sometimes think they're, they're a big distraction to the actual learning process because I know at work when I'm in a meeting, I'm checking my email. Mike, did you, were there some things done in your school when, when you were in that situation to kind of keep the learning focused or was it a little bit of a distraction? Oh, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of restrictions put on the laptops, put on the network, really hard to kind of do anything nefarious gaming or anything like that. But um, actually some of the biggest learning moments I had shockingly, I can say this now that I'm enough years out, uh, is that, you know, it was hacking around the system, right? I mean, we were able to figure out how to download games and trick the computer into thinking it was open a browser when it wasn't, it was opening a game. And it was all sorts of stuff like that that kind of piqued my interest and got me going into technology and stuff like that. So some of those actually worked out even though we got in trouble for them. It was still a great form of learning and hacking around and stuff like that. But for the most part, they were pretty good learning tools when they were locked down correctly. But one to my, I was going to ask, um, so in Sweden, I think the problem in the United States, and you said getting the teachers on board, which I think is the same problem here, but Everywhere. even teachers that are on board, you know, they, they love the technology, they're good with it. It's finding ways to keep the kids um, interacting with learning. So discovering new ways to use the technology to like help them learn in different ways. You know, a lot of teachers think like, oh, I'm using technology. Well, they're doing a PowerPoint and, you know, then they're giving the PowerPoint to the students so they have it. And then they think that that's great, but really interacting and using all the different sorts of, I mean, I just remember one teacher, something as simple as straw poll, um, she put up a straw poll and all of us got to interact and vote and try and pick the right answer and we were doing quizzes and stuff like that. And those are the things I could probably still tell you some of the questions and answers from a, you know, junior in high school course because they were so interactive and different than everything else. And I think that's really the hard part too. And I don't know if you guys kind of find that teachers really, they're kind of, 
not knowing how to innovate with technology in the learning space. And kids nowadays, um, I see, you know, for example, I'm studying to take the bar for law school, which is the final exam at the end to become a lawyer in the United States. And there's this new company out that's trying to challenge all the other bar review courses by having a completely online experience with how you study to take the exam. It's all questions. They have it on the iPad and the iPhone. And instead of going in and paying $3,000 to take a course, you are doing it all with technology. It's just kind of cool. Like things like that, just new ways, because that's how a lot of people my age learn now. We grew up with technology and, and we, le we learn from videos and YouTube and things like that. So I think that's always been one of the hardest challenges are teachers kind of taking to that where you're at, um, trying to find new ways for the kids to learn with technology, or is it still kind of a struggle to get them to innovate in that way? Well, I think it's it's a definitely a stru struggle still for, for uh, more or less every teacher, uh, yeah. regardless how good you are at, at this tech stuff. <clears throat> but I mean, you were talking about distractions and... and uh, Sure, but you know that's the way the world is run today. Uh, you just got to cope with it. Both, like it doesn't matter if you're young or, or old, you got to cope with it, and uh, you got to take your your responsibility there. Uh, I mean, there were distractions earlier as well. For heaven's sake, I'm, I'm an old guy, and and uh, <laughs> I know about that. We didn't have laptops, but but we sure had distractions, you know. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's not really anything anything new here, uh, and. Uh, Talking about locking things down, uh, we really try to avoid that as much as possible. And when the problems come up, uh, and they do, of course, uh, and they do even for us old folks, <laughs> <laughs> so you deal with it. You know, uh, I really don't believe in in uh, in locking everything down, and uh, and I think. I, I believe that in most schools in Sweden, it's pretty much an open play field. You know, like uh, most often, I, I think uh, the um, the students and the teachers they are the the administrators of their own own uh, laptops, for example. So they can do pretty much anything they want with them, uh, within certain limits, for sure. Mm -hmm. And and if they mess up. You know, of course, there's a contract there to start with before they get the gear. If they mess up, then there will be a discussion for sure. Um, and um, I think that's the way it needs to be. And sure, there are problems. Yep, but that's that's what it's all about. You know, like uh, you got to deal with it. Yeah. Do you find the parents are pretty supportive of it? I mean, we we as you know, I'm just put my kids through school. And, and we see this a lot, you know, here in the United States, we have you know, these hover parents and they kind of control everything, right? <laughs> is that, uh, with your with the parents that you deal with, is it typically uh, pretty supportive, pretty engaged in the process, or, or how, how do you feel about the parents that are, you that mean, are working? You engage us to, to using tech? Uh, yeah, using school? tech, supporting the kids with their tech, those kind. I just, you know, we have a high school program at Gallup where I work, right, and I run this mm -hmm. high school internship program, and I'm just going through now. Uh, the kids have graduated from the, we have a 12-week program, and they graduate from it, and then I, I've just been bringing the parents in and Very cool. telling them how cool their kids are, right? That's mm -hmm. every parent wants to hear that. We get mm -hmm. great kids in it. But I found what as I talk to these parents, they you know, there's a kind of a thread that runs through each one of them where they are very supportive of all the things the kids are doing and encouraging in that way. I mean, there's a lot of benefits that these kids have around it. I know that's not the case. I get a special segment of kids in my program. Mm -hmm. Because of what we do, in generally in your school, do the parents get engaged in some of these things, especially around technology, and are they supportive of what the school's doing from a technology standpoint? I'd say most most parents are supportive for sure, but um, actually, it shouldn't be their job to to act as as some kind of tech support or or much of a learning support either. Okay. It's our job, the teacher's job, see, to motivate the students and and uh, and get into this, get them into this learning business, you know. Uh, and many many parents perhaps even don't have the the resources, the ability to to uh, coach their their kids, you know. Uh, 
So, um, but I think I think most most parents are supportive. Sure. Okay. No, right. it's it's interesting, and I think you know there are common when we think about geographical regions, there are common things, and then there are regional things, uh, that where things are the same and different. And so I'm always interested. What so in in the area that you live, what's the common um, you know what's the common infrastructure as far as is it rural or urban? Is there some kind of manufacturing? What, what's the kind of what's the community like, and how big is it? Uh, well. Urban for sure, uh, but um, we've got you know like gorgeous nature all around here. Uh, yeah. Like winter time, people are on on the on the Gulf of Bosnia ice all the time, and and uh, you know it's like a extended part of of the town. But uh, I guess something like um, close to fifty thousand people living here in Lulu and the surrounding areas. Okay. And um, yeah, there's um, quite a bit of steel industry, um, mining up north as well, but more and more um, of the of the tech and and very high tech stuff as well. Uh, like there's the the, uh, the there's a technical university here, and and uh, they are are doing a really good job as well. Cool. So it's a mix. And then, so today is Mike Weger's birthday, which, by the way, we should have led. We buried, we buried the lead, so happy birthday, Mike. But if you were going to go to a tech store and buy Mike something, you know, we, here we have Best Buy or Circuit, mm -hmm. not Circuit City anymore. Um, Amazon. Buy, <laughs> Amazon. Those, right, local stores. Do you have access to some pretty good, or how, how, do, you, how do you acquire in a town of 50,000? Do you have a pretty good tech store there, or do you have to order everything in and have it, uh, have it shipped in? Yeah, there are tech stores, uh, like uh, some really huge Best Buy style. Um, Medium Mart uh, is a huge chain. Uh, you, you, I bet you, you've seen it in Germany way back when you were there. Uh, it's a German German uh, company from the beginning, I think, huge in Europe. I think it's the number one in Europe uh, and in Asia as well. Pretty big. What's the name of it again? Medium market. Oh market yeah, 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 yeah. I saw him. Yeah. Uh, I'm not perhaps a huge fan, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they have all the stuff there, and and they've got often rock bottom prices. And uh, there's another ch other um, really big uh, player here as well, a Nordic chain uh, called Ale Giganten, <laughs> and uh, I mean you have everything in those two huge stores whatever you want to find pretty much the same you know like in, in Best Buy um, and it doesn't take long uh, you know after the the new stuff has been launched somewhere that that we have it here as well so I order my stuff uh, obviously uh, like through the net most of the time most of the time okay um, Mike it's your birthday. What what's um what uh what did you buy yourself? Because I know you did. <laughs> I know uh, you totally bought. Yourself. I had a 50 foot Cat 6 Ethernet cord delivered today. That was pretty nice. What was that? Wear something up. Uh, for the box that you actually uh, uh for were this... kind enough to provide me. So yeah. So for the we Mike and I got some Anana boxes. By the way, we're not going to talk about them tonight. But yeah. These guys shipped us each one, and we're going to be talking about them in the next couple weeks. So VPN solutions. But um, all oh, right, so you got a fifty, you got a fifty foot cable for that. <laughs> uh, pretty much to yeah, I'm doing some fun stuff with no, it. I'm so all, we're no, really I'm going all, all out with it. So, um, but no, for other things on the list, eventually we're going to build that big Windows machine. That is that is the next goal. Uh, Jim's kangaroo that he gave me has really gotten me into it, and so I think we're going to build... What have I uh, done? This won't happen for another, like, six or seven months, but we're going to build okay. a really beefy, big gaming rig slash nice. server box, whatever we want to do with it. So so that's always been on the list, so slowly acquiring the parts for that as we go along is going to be kind of the, the end goal here. But Cool. Yeah. Well, we'll follow you along with that. I, I feel really bad for the Mac guys in your life that I corrupted you <laughs> in that kind of way. 
Yep. Yeah. And uh, it's awesome, by the way. I'm I'm loving every minute of it. Hey, so you brought me back to the middle. Like I was so far towards that Mac side, and now yeah. I'm I'm nowhere near the Windows side, but I'll be right there in the middle. Running Jim, both machines. So. Jim, how, how could you possibly pull that off? I can't understand. I, I don't know. I don't either. He, when I met him, he was such a Mac fanboy. Yeah. And I was, and, and that's why actually that's why I wanted to have him on the show was because I was all Microsoft and he was all, you know, he's blue and I'm red. See how I mean, see how that works here. <laughs> and and <laughs> I'm a know, Mac. I was, he's a PC. Yeah. I was in. Now he's he's getting all liberal on me, and he's coming over to the to the Microsoft side. So I don't know, I don't know what to think of it. Uh, it's it's pretty cool though. You know, it's funny though. You know, I picked up an iPhone in the process, and yeah. and uh, you know, I haven't bought a Mac yet. I I would love to get a Mac Mini that I have available. You know, to have here in the in the studio for a variety of things. But, well, what I uh, liked about it was that it made actually my Apple podcast a lot better because I was able to be a little bit more critical of Apple in areas that they need to be. It's really hard. You get these blinders on when you become absolutely. a fanboy and you can't think outside of it. And um, I really, I got into Google first, you know, using some of the Google products and stuff like that. And then Jim got me into Windows. And now I'm totally like, I have actually a segment on my show. Like last night, we did a top five things we want to change with Apple. I mean, that's how, <laughs> and so it's just, it, it's really changed, but it, it's for the better. You know, you're not cutting them down. You're just trying to, you, you want to root for them. You want them to do well, and you realize yeah. the things that they need to change. So it's been kind of fun uh, in that regard. It's been interesting. Nice. That's, yeah. I, I really would like to run Windows on my on my uh, Mac as well. Uh, that would be neat. Uh, I, I, I use both operating systems, um, but I'd like to have them on, on the same machine, actually. Yeah. That's why the kangaroo is so nice. I have it plugged into a monitor right next, and it's such a tiny Windows box that when I need Windows, I can switch over and use it. It's been uh -huh. it's been awesome. I do it all the time. Have uh -huh. you, Milo? Have you seen those boxes, the kangaroo ones? We reviewed them a couple of months back. They're, I sure have not. They're they're you should sh take a look and see if they're available in your local market. They mm -hmm. literally are less than a hundred dollars. We got ours for ninety nine. It's this big, and <laughs> it's got battery power. Runs Windows ten, two gig of RAM. Um, just a little tiny processor in there, just enough to kind of run the browser and you know some of the other things. And you're not going to do anything miraculous with it, but you can completely unplug it and keep it running. Take it, you know, throw it, put it in your pocket, take it somewhere, pull it out, plug it back in, and it'll stay. You know, it'll it'll hibernate a little bit, and it's got a battery associated with it. So, Kangaroo, check that out. We same um, exact were, size as the iPhone 6 Plus. It's almost yeah, hold on, Mike. Exactly. Let me. Do you have the? It's that. Do you have that out? Yeah. So hold on. Let me let me get the video. Okay. So oh, there's, yeah. Super thin. So it's a little bit thicker. But when you put the 6s plus right next to it, they cover each other up perfectly. Uh, it's probably just a little bit thicker though. So. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. A little kangaroo. Ninety nine bucks here in the United <laughs> States. Yeah. You know, it'd be interesting. We had the guys on the show. Um, I want to say two months ago. The engineer, one of the engineers on the show. Just go to theaverageguy.tv and put kangaroo. In the search, and it'll it'll pull that up, and we did a whole show on those. That might be an interesting way to have a. For, I think for people who want to have a Windows PC in the house but don't want to spend a lot, it's mm -hmm. a perfect way to get Windows 10 uh, going. And uh, I guess you couldn't couldn't run a Hangout on those things. No, I think you no. Probably, well, we tried it once. And oh, it was that's a little right. bit, little bit. Yeah, choppy. but you, you ran a C920 it. off of it, that's which true. is probably not the right. You don't. You would right. want something. If you're in a 720p camera, you could probably do it just fine. Yeah, you'd probably want to run a lower, like a C520 or a C310 uh, from Logitech. Something that's not going to pull. You know. Yeah. HD. It seems that the Hangouts need quite a bit of muscle. Uh, yeah. I think other cameras, perhaps. I don't know. Well, yeah. I I think it's the I think it's the C nine twenties that pull all the juice. Those those things take, and we <laughs> all have them, them, you know. And they they I think they take a lot of juice. Mm -hmm. But well, hey, so Mike, happy birthday! Man. Thank you very much. Fifty five, right today? Twenty five, halfway to fifty. Whoa. I can now rent a car with Whoa. no extra fees. It's gonna be awesome. I get a nice. discount on my insurance. If I didn't just wreck the yeah, car. Yeah, that's 25. Once upon a time, there was a time. I remember something vaguely like that, you know? Yeah. I am almost twice your age, literally. God, that makes me feel old. No well, problem there. I beat you, my, beat you too. <laughs> you got me beat. Hey, after, after 40, we don't talk about uh, yeah, we yeah. don't talk about age anymore. So happy birthday, Mike. Good to, good to uh, celebrate 25. Um, with you, any big plans for the weekend? You guys going to party like it's 1999? Or? Yeah, we are. We're actually heading down to Lincoln to go to one of those escape rooms, which I'm kind of excited for. I've never done one, and uh, it seems like it'd be 
kind of fun to do. So we got Hannah's whole family in on that, and then I'll see my family on Sunday. And seeing out of town people tomorrow, we are like booked solid. It's gonna be awesome. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So so your your leg is in in one piece again. Yes. Well, technically. Technically, it's held together. Uh, I can do a little bit of walking on it with a crutch, so just short distances. But other than that, I'm still one leg on a scooter sort of thing. So, okay. But yes, it's it's doing much better than it was uh, even a week ago. So. Great. Yeah. Nilo, you'd put in the show notes that you're a big Chromecast fan. Oh, yeah. And, and so, you know, that's a little versatile. I actually have started carrying a Chromecast with me when I travel. So that when I'm in the hotel, you know, and a lot of times, you know, the junk that's on TV, you know, it's just, especially hotel TV is terrible. Yeah. And so there's sure. a lot of things you can do by streaming Chromecast right to Absolutely. it. And so I've started carrying one as well as a little wireless router, you know, a little, I like this Kensington 5 and one We reviewed these last year and <laughs> it sat for the longest time. And all of a sudden, now that I, I'm using Chromecast when I travel, it mm -hmm. has become really useful because you can, yeah. you know, you can create that your own little network in the room. Mm -hmm. But how are what what do you like about the Chromecast? How have you been using it, and and what are your favorite parts about it? Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, actually, I bought four of those at at a, a, a local Best Buy in Florida during during Christmas holidays. <laughs> uh, one of my two sisters and, and my brother-in-law they they uh, live there during the winters, so. Is the exchange uh, rate favorable for you or for us when you're here? Um, the exchange rate is not good for us right now, but they had this this offer uh, almost like two for one, so heck, it was cheap. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and actually, I bought one of the uh, whatever you'd call them, like the the uh, regular ones uh, for video streaming, and three audio Chromecasts. And um, uh, obviously, the the um, the one for for video streaming we we use for video streaming, <laughs> uh, Netflix mostly uh, or or Swedish stuff here, um, and it works perfect. Uh, especially these new ones, uh, there's no stuttering, no lag, perfect lip sync. It's just excellent. Um, and uh, the audio Chromecasts, that's a, that's a different story. Uh, only for audio, obviously. <laughs> and uh, there we go. And they are pretty darn amazing as well. Uh, since you can, you know, plug in anywhere in your house uh, where you have, you know, like um, amplifier or, or speaker, uh, powered speakers available. And uh, they play whatever you throw at them, you know, like streaming music, um, whatever, uh, in perfect sync uh, in all, all those locations, at all those locations. It's, it's really, really something. Can I throw YouTube video at it, even though I know it's not the video? I've, I've gotten to the point where I listen to a lot of my music on YouTube now, and I just, like, I'll pick one song and just let it play over, you know, let it play through the... Auto, will it play YouTube videos, only the audio part of it, or does it have to be audio-only content? Good question. I don't much care about YouTube uh, videos <laughs> or the, or the <laughs> audio in them. Um, do they fix that? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it depends how you route the, the audio to those things. Yeah. Uh, I use the... Um, I use mostly, you know, like uh, Google Play Music or Spotify apps on my phone. My wife has Spotify. I, I have Google Play, uh, like the the um, service you pay for. Uh, and both of them work without any hiccups at all. And it's kind of interesting uh, if you start the stream. And you know, just leave it. It just keeps coming since it's from the router directly. Your phone just gives the, gives the command, you know, like uh, play this song or play this playlist, whatever. And uh, well, if I leave the house and and if I leave everything switched on, which would be stupid, <laughs> they just keep playing, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Uh, the whole whole setup is really, really uh, something something new. That you use your, say, your phone or whatever device, uh, only for giving the commands to the Chromecast units, 
and and they uh, grab the stuff directly from the router, and it's rock stable really. And no, it's a print, it's in sync across the rooms. Perfect and is it a, is it a different app than the Chromecast app, or is it the same? Do you use the same app to control everything? How does that work? Um, the video Chromecast uh, is a different story, okay. uh, and you can have like at least that's my understanding that you can't have audio Chromecasts um, and video Chromecasts in one group. You got to have the uh, well. For my part, I only have one video Chromecast in, <laughs> Chromecast in my house, and and the rest of the three of them they are audio Chromecasts and they are are in one well default home group. So uh, if I start say um, uh, Spotify or or um, Google Play Audio, uh, I route the the audio to the home group, and that means uh, that any of the audio Chromecasts uh, can play the stream, and and I can adjust the volume and all that through the um, through the app as well. And many many uh, uh, smartphone apps uh, have directly this capability these days. You know, like many podcast apps. You just fire up the podcast app and and connect to the Chromecast and go. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. You know, those are, those aren't new. They've been out a little while, and uh, yeah. they they have not made as big of a splash. I don't hear a lot of people. You know, the Echo has kind of taken at least oh, here the in the Echo, United States. Man. The Echo has kind of taken big you guys center stage. About nothing else but the Echo. I haven't said. Well, it's been a big deal. It's been a big deal here. Apparently, in the, in the states. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a big deal. In fact, the dots are coming out here. Uh, Dave McCabe just got his uh, his dot, and uh, mine will be will be here in a month. No, very very interesting. Mike, go ahead. Well, and I always like to judge how big something gets by kind of just the general public. Like with the nerdy side of things, I think we all have kind of our own ways of doing that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, I was telling my I was telling people about the Chromecast Audio because Colin, my co-host, actually got one and just loves it. I mean, just talks about how amazing it is. And I'd say about two percent of the people I was talking to had even heard about it, even knew that was a thing. And I was just like telling them how simple it was. And I was like, Do you have speakers at home? It's like, yeah. This would take care of the wireless thing because they were looking for a cord, and every single person who looks for a cord to plug in at home, I tell them about. I'm like, hey, it's 30 bucks, might be worth looking into. And I, I just think when it comes down to Amazon Echo versus this, look at all the advertising Amazon put into the Echo lately, and all of that. And I think it's only recently that all my family's like, oh yeah, I saw that thing on TV. Oh, I, that's the thing from the commercial and stuff like that. So uh, I just think they need to do more advertising because I agree, these things are fantastic products, and for the price, you just you can't beat them, and they're so versatile. I mean, just yeah, like you were right. talking about playing in so many different rooms, and they work the way it should work, open on as many apps as, as they can, and uh, it's it's awesome. I love them. I mean, like, obviously, what you can do with, with uh, especially Chromecast Audio these days, um, it's been incredibly expensive, you know, like something like that, pulling that off earlier. Yeah, you could do oh, yeah. that, but, man, it costs tons. Right. Oh, and I just think about like Sono systems and stuff like yeah. that, which are fantastic wireless things, but a lot of people already have really nice speakers. They've had these. I mean, music's not new. People have been listening to music. It's just the wireless technology that's kind of new that people want to do, and they could plug in a $30 device instead of replacing all their speakers, and they could plug it into wherever they had them, and they'd be all yeah. set. It's yeah. awesome. So I know people don't realize it. What do you have yours connected to in each one of the rooms? I mean, what kind of, what kind of speakers or what kind of system are you using to play them out of? Um, well, downstairs it's the the uh, traditional, old-fashioned, um, so-called hi-fi system. Uh, I'm, I'm not, Big I'm not you know, crazy about this stuff. I I, I do like music a lot, and yeah. I, I listen to good quality music. You know, I technically speaking as well, obviously, but it's not anything you know, state of the art stuff that but I. But it be, plays, I, right? I mean, that's all it needs to do is yeah, play, right? Absolutely. So, and, um, so kitchen, RCA in, I assume you go RCA into that sure. system, right? And sure. It's the input, okay. Yeah, right. Then what about and, upstairs? Uh, yeah, and well, the, the Chromecast units, they do need separate um, mains power. Hmm. So you got to think of that. Um, and in the kitchen, i got this tiny uh, creative-powered speaker, uh, Chromecast plug, plug to that. And uh, here upstairs in my study, um, 
I've, I've got now I've got this really neat tiny Audio Pro uh, Swedish uh, powered speakers um, next to the um, uh, to the to the monitor. And so, and those are the in the note. You, those are those uh, the add-on uh, T8. Is they that... are they are the add-on T8, and they are tiny, and they sound pretty amazing uh, for their size. And uh, actually, I don't think they are uh, produced any longer. They have another model that's ever so slightly a little little bit bigger, called T8L. For large, but the large one ones aren't large either. <laughs> so when you say small, we got a picture of it here. I mean, mm, that's it's hard a, to figure out. That's uh, yeah. They got they've got some things in there for some for perspective. Yeah, the front are, front is like uh, the front of the speaker. I could I'd say it's like like a a uh, pocketbook size, even smaller. Wow. So that kind of gives you some perspective, I think, mm -hmm. in that picture that I have up right now. If you're watching, if you're, you're hearing the audio, uh, audio only. It's sitting on top of a table with some pretty small items uh, mm -hmm. that I would say, and they 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 are pretty tiny. And there is it is it um, is it completely Bluetooth? Is that what they are? Uh, you can either use Bluetooth or or a wired connection. Uh, I I don't. Actually, you wait. Do I? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't use the the Bluetooth connection at all. Uh, the way it's set up now. Okay. So I have, so I have hard wired them. You're doing a line in on this one. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You can see. Actually, we're looking at the back of them right now. They have kind of the traditional stereo wires. If you if you're running those, so a lot mm -hmm. in the old days, a lot of those guys ran that to their you know their big old speakers. Uh, then it's got an RCA, so the white and the red connection mm -hmm. that goes in. And then you have just a traditional line in. And then there's a looks like there's a USB port on the back of this thing. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's a special one. And uh, uh, I think it's partly for <clears throat> for the uh, it's partly like Audio Pro specific kind of stuff. And you can charge some some of their extra modules through that or whatever I, I really haven't looked into that too much but you can't plug them into your your laptop or anything using that directly I, I don't think so I don't okay. use it okay it says on the back USB power only for audio pro wireless receiver yeah there we go there we go DC and out. There's, <clears throat> then there's a remote and and this remote uh, it's pretty neat it's solid metal um, uh, like really nice design and uh, you know like uh, not of the flimsy plastic type. <laughs> yeah, I know we're looking at that. You you held that up and then we're seeing that from the website as well. So um, yeah, so pretty handy. What's what does this set you back if you if you purchase something like this? What is um, uh, typically what? How much do those run? Let's see here. It was kind of a clearance sale. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have bought bought them. Uh, it set me back uh, enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like buying them and and paying the full price, um, definitely more pricey than your regular, whatever you call them, computer speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, these are not actually your regular computer speakers, uh, I'd say, uh, and and they got a, a subwoofer. Uh, you can connect to these tiny things as well, and that really rocks your world, I think. Uh, I'm I'm tempted, uh, but uh, it's that's that's uh, a bit pricey as well. So I, I don't know. Amazon UK has them for 299 pounds, which is 430 US dollars. Okay, so a little so, pricey. Yeah, the, just the a little. Speakers only. Uh, that was just the, just the speakers, I believe. And that's the T8 or T8L? Uh, just the T8. But that's just huh. on the only place I could find it real quick was Amazon UK. Okay. So, okay. Might for other places. Mm -hmm. Audio oh, Pro good. is kind of an interesting company. Um, They've been uh, in, in the business for for, uh, for a long time, and uh, they are like specialists in this in this wizardry to get some amazing 
base from from small cabinets, you know, and and subwoofers and stuff. And I've always been kind of skeptical about subwoofers, especially, but they have been doing an amazing job with those. You know, like it sounds seamless, uh, absolutely top of the line stuff. Uh, and and you can pay top dollar if you want a really good system. Yeah, sure, but. They are they are high quality units. They uh, they say on their website the sound is Scandinavia, Scandinavia, right? That's the <laughs> that's the uh, that's their motto. So no, pretty cool. Hard to find here in the U.S. At least on the I Amazon know. store here in the United mm-hmm. States. Yeah, that's, I couldn't uh, find them. They're, they nice. say there's a retailer, like there's a pin in the United States, but it doesn't list where it's at. So. Uh, again, that's Audio Pro, and I, I I'm sure we have some. Audio files in our audience that uh, that, that would say, "Oh no, Jim, they're easy to find," you know, <laughs> uh, kind, kind of deal. Um, and so as I'm as I'm looking around here, yeah, maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit. Well, very cool. No, very cool. Those look. Uh, that's that is um, that's super super interesting. Hey, let's go back to Google real quick. Uh, Hangouts and Hangouts on Air and Google Plus. You know, it's it's taken it on the chin over the last six months to a year. I mean, I think since the last time you interviewed me, we're seeing Google kind of disconnect Google Plus and hang Ripping out a little bar. bit. Is that, is that yeah? And I'm hearing uh, from the communities a lot. Oh, Google Plus is dead, and yet there are some communities out there that are absolutely just thriving still oh, in, yeah. that, in the in the Google Plus. How do you feel about that? Are you are you worried about it at all? Do you think you can still continue to go on like you've been going without much change? T- tell me a little bit about how you're adapting to the changes at Google. Well, Google Plus as a social network, um, if it was supposed to be some kind of a comp- competitor to Facebook, I don't even know. Perhaps that was the case <clears throat> in that in that case, it didn't turn out the way they wanted to, apparently. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I've never been extremely interested in uh, in this broad social stuff using Google+. I've been interested in getting the connections that I want to have. Um, and mostly they've been in the Google ecosystem, and especially they've been within the, the Google Apps for Education thing. Because I had uh, I had to work pretty hard to implement uh, Google Apps in my school, and got lots of lots of help uh, from from folks uh, who were active on Google Plus. So it's been a gold mine for me within the Google ecosystem, and still is. I don't notice any difference there whatsoever. Um, what has been happening, like with Hangouts, for example, um, I think it's pretty obvious that that Hangouts, uh, and especially the way I see it, Hangouts on Air, uh, is, is like uh, one of the, the best things uh, they, they had in, in Google+. Another thing is Photos, apparently. And they ripped both of those things out of there, uh, which perhaps tells you something. <laughs> um, but I sure do hope that Google keeps at it, you know, like working in, and... Uh, Putting lots of, of, of effort uh, making Hangouts and especially Hangouts on Air even better, since I mean Hangouts on Air is it's unique. There's there's nothing like it, um, and hence it doesn't even cost you anything. It just blows great? the mind. It just blows the mind. Yeah. Public streaming as much as as you can eat. You know, uh, a couple of years ago that would have been you know like pipe dream or something. You know. I think so, it still uh, is. I mean, I looked. Uh, you talk about Twitch or any you stream anything like that. It's expensive to stream. Mm-hmm. To live stream is just crazy expensive. But with mm-hmm. Hangouts, it's just free and easy. Yeah. And I set it up. I know both of you guys. I think set it up through events, right? Is how you set up right. your Hangouts. I actually just do it through YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the live streaming section, what they've actually they have a beta with live streaming straight from the browser within YouTube, which I have not tried yet, but it's pretty easy to set up there as well. So. It's really easy to set up through through YouTube as well. Yeah. The thing that's that's uh, important, I, I think, is that you get somehow this landing page or, or whatever you call it, you know, like where you <clears throat> where you have your your 
future hangout, your schedule hangout connected somehow so that that they are not <laughs> up in the air <laughs> right in a matter of speaking um, so why i why I still use the old Google plus um, interface is mainly because I still have the events available there and I like to schedule the events and and have that all set and that's pretty neat I think you can however you can do it through um, through the dedicated uh, Hangouts uh, web page as well. Yeah, however, you can. That's you how can. I did it today. Yeah. Is I, I still go the old school way. I go into Hangouts. I create a Hangout. It creates an event. Or right. you can create an event which creates a Hangout. Either way, mm -hmm. or like Mike does it, you can still go to YouTube and uh, and do it directly. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Any, any of those ways. And that's how we do it. I mean, we've Mike and I have tried. We've flirted with Blab a little bit, and it's mm -hmm. worked. Mm, it's had some... Some good days and some bad days. Uh, you know, Hangouts isn't always perfect either. <laughs> you know, from that standpoint, we've had some varying degrees of video quality tonight. It started really good. Towards the middle of the show, it got a little weak. I've been noticing some stuttering on the video, and now we're kind of back to good. So, you know, you but get. I, with the, are you sure you notice the stuttering in the in the YouTube video as well afterwards? Not, no, that's, that's a good question. Stuttering. That's a good question because I know Google's doing some wizardry at the local level where. What they're pushing out on YouTube, what we see, is not always what gets recorded on the backside. Nope. And right. so, nope. Which is both plus and minus. I, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what? I'd rather have if I'm going to if I'm going to sacrifice quality, I'd rather have it live because the mm -hmm. much fewer users come in and view it live. Sorry, live sure. folks. Not, 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 <laughs> not, not, not. <laughs> but um, you know, and get that really good audio and video quality. And in mm -hmm. a sense, a double ender for both audio and video. If they could get it that way, where mm -hmm. later, and they could even take a day to merge those together, right? If it yeah. took, you know, if they had to gather it, put it together, whatever, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. It, I, we are getting some good quality that way. I mean, the, the videos yeah. on the backside are pretty good. Yeah. I think the, the audio, Hangouts audio, uh, is, is definitely sufficient for me. I mean, I think it's pretty darn good. It's not, audio file quality obviously but I don't care about that either uh, if it's as good as it's now it's fine with me really yeah the chat room's giving me some crap now because I, <laughs> I told them they don't matter <laughs> oh, yeah, you're of all the people I would cut you first <laughs> I didn't mean it that way oh, man that was a bad thing I know I'm dead I'm dead. Here last week I, uh, you know, I put a call out for some feedback and I got a little bit if you uh, a few of you uh, sent me a note this week, um, letting me know. I, I asked, you know, how how do you, you know, how are you consuming it? What do you think about the podcast? Some of those kinds of things. Uh, Kyle uh, sent me a nice note uh, earlier in the week, and then let me find the other one here really quick. They were, you know, of course they were right here when I needed them, and now that I'm going back to look. Um, having uh, having some issues finding that one second here. So I'll get those here in just a second. So thanks for dropping those notes. You know, in the last uh, podcast, I said, you know, why do you listen? What do you do? Nilo, do you listen? How, is, do, how often do you listen to us on Home Gadget Geeks? What's kind of your – and you can be as honest with me as you want, but how often and why? Why do you listen to the, to the um, podcast? Pretty often, actually. And uh... – well, I mean, you have lots of stuff, lots of podcasts. Um, you are really heavily into this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a sickness. And um, and uh, quite a bit of that stuff is, is way above my horizon, you know, like technically speaking. But um, I'm always curious about different ways of using tech and um, getting this window into the uh, Windows world, huh? pun intended, of course. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's, it's fun, uh, especially since um, I'm using Macs quite a bit as well. So uh, keeping kind of up to date in, in that world as well, it, it's really neat. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I like to listen to you guys. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. It's good, it's good to have you as a listener. Um, uh, Philip Lawry wrote in this week. He said, hey, Jim, just a quick message um, to say... 
um, a hobby of mine is new technology and how I can use it so Home Gadget Geek fits that interest working with the noisy shared office environment I often listen to your podcast at my desk at work which is interesting that we become the voice that drowns out the noise which is a little <laughs> odd Mike I think yeah, I like but, it. Uh, Philip, I'm down with that. Others, uh, other times uh, when I'm awake at night, and hopefully that's to put him to sleep. That would be the <laughs> right. That's that's kind of what I'm hoping for. He says, in the past, I've engaged with the podcast by leaving questions on the answering machine, the call-in number that we have, that's out there on the site. He says, by the way, of information, I'm a geologist and I work in oil production and development projects. The oil, the oil industry, of course, is a cyclical business, and we're experiencing a a, a grim time now is what he says and it is bad I mean it was high flying just two or three years ago oil you know fracking and all kinds of stuff going on here in the US when gasoline was four dollars uh, uh, a gallon for 50 almost at some point oil industry doing very well of course you know it's tanked here in the US in particular and uh, so it's tough on tough times for those guys our work is quite IT centric with huge data sets to manage manipulate and use thanks for the podcast cheers Philip so Philip, thanks for sending that uh, that note in to let us know what you're doing. You can still send those in if you'd like. Just kind of give me an idea of why, um, you know, kind of why you listen. Uh, Kyle said you asked about why people listen to the podcast. I listen because of the community. The community I just bashed, by the way, out there in the <laughs> chat room. Uh, I listen because of the community, and it helps uh, that the community is interested in a lot of the same things that I'm interested in. It is kind of fun to have a community of a lot of like-minded folks and I think that's one of the best things about this get the you know the the geeks network so to speak community if we if we broaden that out to Mike your show is on the geeks network we think about home server show we think about surface geeks we think about agnostic tech we think about observed tech there's a whole bunch and plus a few more I haven't even got a chance to listen to yet that are out there uh, around tech it's just kind of fun we're all kind of like-minded and it's a friendly community to be a part of so if you're one of those listeners, you can still send me a note if you want to. Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Let us know why you listen. It's always kind of nice. We'll read your, we'll, uh, read your note on the podcast here, and uh, we've got some things coming up. Nilo, hang tight for one sec. Thanks for waking up at 2.30 2 in the morning, man. You are a rock star. I'm just going to say. I'm a rock star. It's you been get a the, No, it's been great having you on and kind of catching up and getting kind of a European feel. We don't, we never get, anyone from Europe for the most part because of the time we podcast and yeah. you're the only one dedicated enough I shouldn't say that Mike we've had a few other guests on here that have been in Europe uh, we were gonna interview uh, Jamie uh, from ring.com he was in London set his alarm slept right through it <laughs> so that didn't uh, that didn't really work out but we struggle with Europe it's super easy to get Australia um, yeah. Because those it's noon time for those guys uh, uh, mostly, and so getting Australian guests is, is pretty easy. Of course, anybody here in the U.S. is fairly easy to get in the evenings, but um, in Asia is not too bad either. It's that's kind of doable. We can do Singapore, even Japan, but um, getting Europe has been difficult. And so thanks Europe for making this happen. Things happen. Thanks for taking this. Well, and I find too, like when I was when I'm over in Germany, there's a real difference in culture between what people do in the evenings in America and in Europe and it uh, yeah. it just kind of shuts down I mean I, that's my impression when I'm in Germany I mean it goes dark and it goes dark <laughs> and people are home and they're not you know it's it, that kind of stuff for the most part not so much here in the United States we're finding especially in this podcast culture that's the time to go to work and so <laughs> podcasters are all hours of the night go on blab at any time and man you can podcasters find podcasters are crazy animals they are kind of crazy aren't they they are kind of crazy well well uh, hang tight we'll we'll uh, keep you around a little bit for the post show if that's okay I'd love to sure. have you do that I'll kind of uh, I'll wrap things as we think about it. a couple things uh, that I'm working on Mike mentioned the the Anana box uh, um, routers that we're kind of looking at and so he and I both got a set of those and he's got the tunneler is it tunneler yeah tunneler Yep. Tunneler, and I've got the pro version of it. Yeah, he's showing the box right there. Although I should have probably put you on the screen <laughs> when we did that. Here, I'll show the uh, I'll show the pro box. So we'll have these guys on. We're working on it. They sent me. I didn't I didn't hold that up very long, did I? Um, so we'll have these guys on. Pretty interesting. I'm not a big big VPN guy, but it 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 does it, tour too, though. Yeah, the pro it does, does tour. 
yep. yeah, the pro the pro does tour, and we got some interesting things to talk about. So we'll have these guys on. Uh, I I took it upon myself. I was having wireless router problems here in the house. I use it as an access point. So I just went ahead and got on Hub. I was we've been talking about all those other mesh open mesh on Dave's show. So if you listen to Home Server Show, we were talking about open mesh. We were talking about Eero. We were talking about Luma. And I looked at all those, but I didn't want to drop. Although it's, this was not cheap, it was 185 bucks. So this still isn't cheap. This is the um, the TP-Link version of it. They have an ASUS version as well on Hunt from Google. Drop dead simple. We'll be writing up, um, and I've just had it running a day, so I'm not gonna. I'm not necessarily interested in saying good or bad at this point. But uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit here in the future. Those things have been out a little bit of time. There's some pretty good reviews out there. Along so far, so good. It's uh, it's one of those things that um, it's working so far. The other that I bought that cheap TP-Link mic. We talked about this a while, maybe a year ago. That they were like thirty bucks or twenty bucks, I think. And and it was like, well, we'll give it a try and see how it works. Well, it worked right up until my son moved home. <laughs> and then for whatever reason, whatever he brought home, and he's like, what, what? Well, it's probably because he's connecting the Xbox and his PS4 to that thing and it shouldn't it should just be fine then again it's a twenty dollar product right yeah right like you kind of get you kind of get what you pay for well and that's right. what uh even my two hundred dollar apple airport extreme it's the ac model fantastic once i turned off the routing capability once i have the pf sense box and that thing is only an access point it is amazing great access point but the routing capabilities on it weren't the best but yeah. i mean so 189 actually isn't terrible is that ac as well, yeah, it's ever it's everything. Right, so I mean that's is, not bad at all. That's it's everything for Including an AC the router. Eight hundred two dot fifteen Bluetooth standard that's coming oh, or that's I here. Even, haven't heard about it. It's available. It's got a USB port in the back that you can update the firmware with it. It's got Google's. So we'll just update it as we go along. It's got a really easy to use. Um, I mean, you set it up. I mean, talk about like you know the traditional wireless router. Uh, 192.168.1.1, you log in, it's got a million screens. It This setup was literally three screens. Kind of boom, 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 attach. I felt like I was setting up, um, sorry, Neela, we're going to say Amazon Echo again. You know how you set up your Echo and you attach your phone to the Echo and then you set it up and then you detach it so it can do its thing? Same kind of setup with this on Hub. You attach to it put some password stuff in, it sets it up for you. But when you think about a wireless router, drop dead simple. And then the app keeps track of who's logged in and who's using you know, Wi-Fi. And if you want to know who the hogs are, you can see it pretty easy. If you want to prioritize uh, machines, you can do that right in the app. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, Nilo, have you looked at the OnHub? Is that something you've seen before from Google? You're, you're in that space. But Google, TP-Link, and Asus have have come together on this. Have you seen this before? All new uh, to me. Okay. Okay. Well, Apple-esque packaging for sure, right? So you you pull this off, but wait, hold on. Then to, then you open it up. This thing. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and it sits right in there, right? It's not. And then all this stuff is down below. But pretty nice packaging from that standpoint. But but it's this is kind of a joint venture with Google to make. Google TP-Link and Asus to make routers easier and more secure. They're taking away all the a lot of the options. It one of the things it doesn't have that a lot of the the negativity in the in the forums is for the advanced routing stuff. It's just not there, and it's just there. That's the whole purpose is to make this thing a family router that's easy to use that people can set up and secure pretty quickly, and that you just don't have open access points hanging around, and a little bit of future proofing. So it's got seven antennas in there and some other things. So, so far, so good. We'll talk more about the OnHub router as we uh, we go forward. Mike, you got any um, you got any other tech coming uh, birthday-wise that you might be, uh, besides what we've talked about? That I don't think so. This is a very to. prepare, winter is coming sort of birthday because uh, I leave my job soon to start studying for the bar and for graduation, and then... Uh, don't go back to a new job until after I take the bar at the end of July. So it's kind of just like a bear down, you know, sort of a sort of a moment desert. for us. But it's a it's still it's coming. fun. Yeah, a cold Sweden. I have to like stay off Amazon though because I just can't resist. It's it's too <laughs> addicting. It is hard once you start looking, and uh, you know, so stay away. Nothing new. Yeah, American Express right now just came out with a new offer: double your double points for any. 
purchases on Amazon. I'm like, that is not what I needed. And it's between now and the end of July. So <laughs> and nice. it's not like you get paid that off over time, right? No, That's, no, it's a charge card. Yeah. You pay it off every month. Yeah. So, yep. No, very good. Well, we'll remind everyone if uh, I, I told you I'd love to get some emails from you. Why do you listen to the podcast? That's kind of helps us tune things up here a little bit. And what do you like best? And what are you doing? We continue to, you know, the format, if you're new to Home Gadget Geeks, uh, format is a little bit like what we did tonight. It's Mike and I. We bring guests on that are listeners. Uh, so so Nilo, in this case, uh, has been a listener. I was on his podcast. He talks about interesting tech things. We have uh, small company founders on. We've done that uh, with companies like Zapier and Ring.com. Um, we have some, you know, we get a, we get some experts in when we get like Kevin Schoonover who will come in, Paul Brerin, who will come in and give us a real rundown. In fact, it's time to get Paul back on. So I need to get Paul, I need to line you up if you're listening. We need to get you uh, uh, get you back on. Uh, we were thinking about John Nye the other day. So John's our ethical hacker. Uh, he's a Bellevue guy, lives here. I think he lives here. No, maybe he's in Omaha now. But And uh, with these VPN devices that Mike and I are messing with, it'd be good to have John back on. So we appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. We're out here every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern at, at 2, 3 a.m. What's your time zone, Nilo? What? What uh, what time zone are you in there? Um, it is C E T Central European time C E T. That is like okay. um, Greenwich plus one. So so three a.m. C E T. As That's well, right. That's we're out right. here Thursdays three a.m. until daylight savings time. Because you don't change with us, do you? You guys stay. Or we you... are in daylight savings time now. That's such a mess. That's it is that a whole mess. system should be abolished. Yeah, my just, wife hates it. You know, really. Everybody I'm, hates I'm, it. What, I don't care. You know, what just thing? change it. It's yeah, not white yeah, okay. Yeah. You just change it's it. It's just a pain. So, so we'll remind everyone that the Average Guy TV platform, both web and media hosting, of course, is powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and trust. For more information, head over to maplegrovepartners.com. Plans start at 10 bucks, and uh, you get a lot of stuff for 10 bucks in hosting over there at Maple Grove Partners. Maplegrovepartners, all one word, dot com. I want to thank Roger over at WLMN Radio for streaming us live out in Grafton, West Virginia. So, Roger, thanks for doing that as well. I hope, I hope all things are well. When's the last time you talked to Roger, Mike? Is it all things well in Grafton? Uh, I think he was he was having some issues just like uh, with health and stuff like that. So I'm hoping oh, he's doing well. Yeah, right. So we're hoping he's he's Hope doing the best better. for Roger out yeah. there. And if again, if you're listening in Grafton, I should have a special price. Maybe an average guy TV T-shirt for the person who first person, the first person to send me an email from Grafton, West Virginia. It have to be. I want a letter and I want it postmarked, <laughs> proving. <laughs> what about an IP address with this new device right here? I could pretty much go anywhere. So. I don't know about <laughs> it's, Grafton, but... <laughs> you're not gonna get a T-shirt, Uyghur. I'm just telling you, you're not gonna get a T-shirt. All right. We'll uh, remind you to download our mobile app as well. Head over to HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Easiest way to get that on your phone, both Android and iPhone. It's available for you. Thanks for using the Amazon affiliate link so that we can purchase things on the scholarship fund uh, to be able to send those out. If you're interested in testing something, let me know. We'll buy it for you, ship it to you. You'll test it, write about it, and get to keep it. So that's what we do. And uh, if you want to get in contact with me, do. But uh, theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon when you're purchasing from Amazon. And Amazon CA when you're buying in Canada. And now I don't have a European Amazon link. So there's no way to, for me to do that there. But we do cover Canada and the United States. We want to thank you for listening. Again, we're out here Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, 3 a.m. CET. <laughs> and we'll be back next Thursday. And with that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.